Example 5.6. In this example, we have an airplane which moves forward at a speed of 971 kilometers per hour. The frontal intake area of the engine is given to be 0.8 meters square, and the entering air density is given 0.736 kilograms meter cube. And a stationary observer determines that relative to the Earth, the jet engine exhaust gases move away from the engine at a given speed of 1050 kilometers per hour. The engine exhaust area is given as 0.558 meters square and the exhaust gas density as 0.515 kilograms per meter cube. The goal of the problem is to estimate the mass flow rate of the fuel into the engine in terms of kilograms per hour. Notice that this problem we have a moving control volume and the conditions are steady. The velocities on the three control surfaces are constant and we have one uh, mass flow rate going out and two going into the control volume. The control volume for this particular problem is given by this boundary. We start the analysis with the continuity equation for a moving control volume. Notice that this is the Reynolds transport that we originally used. However, the difference is that now we have, instead of velocity of the fluid, we have the relative velocity. And that is what we need to identify at each one of the particular control surfaces. Since this is an steady case, we're able to uh, get rid of this term and this is going to be equal to zero. Now, we know that uh, the control volume is moving, however, the velocities are maintained constant. Therefore, we could reduce this particular terms into the summation of the mass flow rates at the different control surfaces. The only difference is that we are going to have the definition of the mass flow rate in terms of the relative velocity rather than the fluid velocity. Therefore, we have a one, a two, and a three. So we have mass flow rate at mass at point one is in common, so it's negative. At point two is outgoing, it's point two. And point three is the one that is the fuel, and that has to be equal to zero. So this is going to be equal to the mass flow rate three, which is the one of the fuel, is going to be equal to the mass flow rate going in minus the mass flow rate living. And then we define this as density W1A1 minus 0.1 density at 0.2 W2A2. Notice that the quantities of density and area for each one of the cross-sectional surfaces is given. So the task now is to find the value of the relative velocity at each one of the points. So let's just start with cross-sectional area number one. Note that the relationship between the velocity fluid is equal to the relative velocity plus the velocity of the control volume. So for point one, we simply write that V1 is equal to W1 plus the velocity of the control volume. So this is at the beginning of the engine. So we could just draw it like this. We know that the airplane is moving into this direction and that is the velocity of the control volume. We also know that relative to the observer, there is no velocity fluid going into this particular area. So the velocity of the fluid is equal to zero. So if we solve for v, uh, W1, W1 is simply going to be the negative of the velocity of the control volume. Therefore, V1, W1 is going to be in this direction and is going to have the same value as the velocity of the control volume, which is equal to 971 kilometers per hour. Let's now do the same analysis in section two. In section two, we note that the plane is moving at the same 
velocity, so the control volume velocity goes in this direction. We also know that the observer notices that the gases are living at this direction, uh, V2. Therefore, we could find that, that W2 is going to be equal to V2 minus the control volume velocity. So we know that W2, the velocity uh, of the gases exiting is equal to 1050. It's 1050 kilometers per hour minus, and notice that the velocity of the control volume is in the opposite direction as this. So we write minus 971 kilometers per hour. Therefore, W2 is going to be equal to 20, 21 kilometers per hour. And it's going to have this direction. Now that we have the value of the relative velocities at the two controlled surfaces, we could calculate the mass flow rate of the fuel. So the mass flow rate of the fuel, as we defined previously, is equal to uh, Rho 1, A1, W1, minus Rho 2, A2, W2. Now let's substitute the values that we have. This is equal to 0.736 kilograms per meter cubed. A1 is equal to 0.8 meters square. And W1 we calculated to be 971 kilometers per hour minus the density at point two is given as 0.515 kilograms per meter cubed. The area is given to be 9558 meters square and the velocity once again the relative is 221 kilometers per hour. If we calculate it, we find that the mass flow rate of the fuel, then it becomes 9,100 kilograms per hour. Notice that this type of problem, when uses a control volume that is moving, the key is to be able to determine the relative velocity at each one of the control surfaces. That is the main task when you have a moving control volume. Once you have that and those values of velocities are constant, then you could simply substitute into the summation of the mass flow rates at each one of the control surfaces, and that's what we have over here, to be able to find the mass flow rate um, of the fuel.